crazy episode. Riddle can kill. I promise you, you do not want to miss this one. Like my boy DJ just said, strap your seatbelts, fasten your seatbelt, and yo, look, it's going to be crazy. Like, yeah. we're master marketers, that's all we think about. And we knew that people needed evidence because we live in a world today where it's real easy you to, to fake it. Yeah. yeah, so. Oh, I mean, this brings up a point we always talk about, right? Mm -hmm. That it's easy when you say uh, a rapper or you uh, like a football player or something like that to see what you do, but nobody knows what we yeah. do. Exactly. It's not, it's no, there's no way to gauge it. You can't look at a stat sheet that everyone is familiar with and say, right. all right. P. Hicks scored six touchdowns today. Exactly. So when you see him, congratulate him. So I always try to do as many of these interviews and as many of these different talks as we can possibly do so people can understand what a winning team looks like. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the that's the benefit of that, though. But I definitely do understand what like I'm He was in the club about. talking about, this not a rapper bag. It's not a rapper bag. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the <laughs> thing. Like, nobody else knows that. Like Everybody else that's just enjoying the spectacle don't know that like everything we did was like orchestrated. Yes. Like, of course, we're just naturally chill and cool people. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and we know the vibe, but like literally, we we all like executed our plan. You know. Yeah, that was the fun. And business came on the back of that. Yeah, and, and yeah that was the main objective. Like, yo, we went in there to invest. Like last night, of course, we had a lot of fun, but that was in the uh, financial investment that we all collectively made together. You know what I mean? Right. And and we were like, all right, we even ran the numbers prior to the night. We were like, all right, what are we probably going to yield on our return on this investment? And we already knew that. And we were like, oh yeah, that's a good number. Mm -hmm. That's the smartest shit I've ever heard outside of going to like a club. Because usually somebody to go to a club or a party, you, you, you just let it fly. No. Nah. Y'all had like a strategic well, yes. motive behind going to a club. Well, that is going. correct. It's yeah. a classic case of what I like to call, I, I think I think more people just need to have more, more stuff for sale. Yeah, right. We just got a lot of stuff for sale, so it makes more sense for us to do more stuff. Right. Um, I always say, I don't know, we're going to get into social media and we haven't even got a chance to introduce ourselves. Not we just went, and we just went in because y'all don't, I don't think people understand how eager we've been waiting to do a yeah. podcast together. Yeah. Now, I've been watching AK for a minute and you know, I'm a big fan of ESPN. We're actually watching the, uh, the, the uh, what, what, what's this? The, 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 Raptors, the, the, Raptors the Raptors and Celtics, Celtics yeah. right, right now. Right now as we speak. As we speak, but my thing is I've been watching and I've been wanting for a very yeah. long time. Eager. So excuse us if we have, Thirsty. if we have not uh, gave our Instagram name and what we're going to talk about. We're going to get to all that. We're going to get to all of that. But, man, all of this, everything, everything you see us do, everything that we talk about, everything that's before you has been well thought out and very strategic. You know, you know, I like to play chess. You know what I always tell people? It's the difference between what they call tactics and strategy. Huh. Absolutely. So tactics is just like how you operate something. So you've got a tactic to operate a camera. But a strategic idea is the bigger idea. So I, I told Will the other day, I was talking about parties, I said, like, party promoters will hold the line. Right. And they'll do that to make it look like the club is packed and big and make more people want to come. So yep. that's a tactic. Yep. But if you have a, a series of parties that you're using to brand yourself in a certain way, like I'm throwing mansion parties or I'm throwing pool parties or something like that, right. that's more of a strategic idea yeah, because yeah. it encompasses all those tactics. You right. can just, like, build that up more and more. Right. So I think that's the big thing, like, with us. We don't just think about the tactics. Of course, we know tactics about, for example, we're going to talk about social media. Mm -hmm. So we know a tactic of how to get more engagement. Like, DJ right. has all these crazy viral video strategies. Like you just used one, like, didn't you? Yeah, I just did. So it's like, you got all these strategies of how to make, say, a bunch of people comment on a post or get a bunch of people to like a post. Right. But then, what is that? What's the bigger idea then? That's what you're talking about, I believe, when you say having something for sale. Because we're not about to spend all this time on Instagram right. just because... It's fun. Yep. Or just because everybody said this is where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No such a thing as free time for us. Like, everything's a, an allocation or an investment of some sort of resource we have. So, yeah. even with that, like, it's all methodical on, on this end. I'm not going to lie. I remember I, one thing I do hate, too, the, the, the evilness behind social media is that when I, for example, I went to a listening party, right? Mm -hmm. And most of the time when you go to a listening party, you listen to the music. You're trying to see, like, okay, mm -hmm. at a release party, we want to get the feel and the sound of the song and the music. Man, there's people that I went snapping it up, IG, and I'm like, yo, like, they they can't, they're, like they're, they're not in the moment. Exactly. And that's how it is sometimes. You go out sometimes, like, man, they, they just want to snap in IG just because. You know what that is? There. You know why? I agree. You know why? Because they haven't figured out it's a game. One of the things when I met Country Cowboy here, DJ, 
he always told me that Preach Instagram is just a game. Because right. sometimes, here's the funny thing. So I'll post some stuff on my IG story sometimes. And girls will literally hit me up asking me questions about what I just posted. Right. And I always tell them, you don't need to worry about that. That is, that is a game. Of course, there's an authenticity to everything we post. Right. It's, it's my real life, but you can only show a slice of yourself through Instagram. For sure. You can't show everything, no matter how real I and try to be on Instagram. And you get to pick and choose what you show. Yeah, it's exactly. edited. Everybody, you watching everybody's highlight reel. Like, right. If you look at any, that's like, that's, that would be equivalent to you looking at a sports figure or something like that. Right. And just seeing only shots they made. It's like, looking at a, yeah. it's like looking at a, it's like looking at a high school recruit, Absolutely. an athlete, and that's his hoop mixtape. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're gonna get all the spectacular plays, exactly. the dunks, the the passes, nobody's, everything. Nobody's They're not gonna any show you problems. Shots. No, nobody's exactly. having the only any thing problems. people want to see is the best version of themselves. That's yeah. the only thing, you know. And, that's and how that's the game is. Exactly. But see, the winners of this game understand that it's a game. And too bad I was recording that whole time and didn't have the audio on. <laughs> I love this. Because, man, maybe we, we don't mess maybe, so maybe, we go, maybe we can go find it from here and just splice it in. <laughs> right? We'll right. figure it out. But Premier, Premier, you know I can. No, I can't because you don't have the audio. Yeah, it'll be all right. I'll use the S and B roll. But I love Literally, it. we're always recording content. Everything, bro. Everything. everything is content. Everything is important. But I just know, um, just, I, I just understand that Instagram is meant to be played. Right. A lot of people don't understand that, and a lot of people aren't used to seeing a person play it so well. Right. So this is where the scam comes in, and this is where, what is this? Like, most people aren't used to seeing a person utilize their Instagram to the full capability of what it's supposed to be used for. Right. I mean, you know the, thing, the thing can print money. It can. The thing wow. can print money. I just want well, you to do, I just want everybody here that's listening to understand that please don't make life harder than what it's supposed to be. It's all a numbers game. If I can get a million people to look at something, just imagine if I had something to sell those a million people. Of course, all a million won't buy. But let's just say 10% of that did. Mm -hmm. And whatever my product cost was a dollar. What's 10% of a million? 10,000, right? I don't want to do no math on air. Please you know we have... Yeah, you know, it's it's no, hey, 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 I don't want to answer that. that. No, 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 no. Okay. First you episode, first <laughs> hey, episode three look, of look, I, we, we, I told him, I said, don't ever do math on air. I, and you know, it just hit me after I gave the wrong answer, but you gave me the right answer. That's a great one, too. It's 100,000. 100,000. So just think don't about spell, how foul. Don't spell and don't do math. <laughs> on air. We, we completely stopped that. That's a, a, a yep. sin. But yeah, man, um, just imagine that, though. You know what I'm saying? All, man, everybody is a, everybody that's on Instagram markets online. And I'm going to tell you a, a good example. Kim Kardashian, all they do is post stuff to drive traffic to wherever they want them to go. Absolutely. Basketball players. Yeah, look at, look at, basketball players, they sell a product, which is their skill. Everybody sells a product on Instagram. Right. Everyone. What, artists, rappers, what, Drake, What I find everyone. fascinating about this phone, though, it's free. Yeah. It's a free platform. You got YouTube, you got Instagram, you got all these free platforms. And I think about it, if 1950 were trying to start a business right now, you wanted to get a bunch of people to see what you were doing, you know how much money you'd have to pay? Yeah. You would have to have a large ad budget to get TV spots and Absolutely. take out newspaper ads and stuff like that. But right now, in the current generation, if you understand social media, you can take somebody who's at the back room of their mama's house. You can take a kid from somewhere in Florida. You can take somebody in India, anywhere across the world. And immediately, they have access to millions of billions of eyes across the world that can see what they're doing. The content. And not only that, people who really want to engage with this because... We always say you can go to some dark corners of like right. YouTube. I'm pretty sure everybody here, you can search them on YouTube and it's just a whole list of videos. You can search backpack enthusiasts and it's a, it's a, it's a guy on there. Yeah, so this is the Jan Sport 75D. <laughs> and I really didn't like this versus the other Jan Sport. It, 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 all that exists and you can find a niche like that. So I think we just underestimate the power of social media. Because we look at it from a standpoint of, oh, they all, they're on their thirst trap and they're taking pictures with their ass out of something like right. that. But really, what it comes down to is, it's free attention, and if you leverage it right, money print. And I'm going to tell you something, too, because that's why I said this episode is so, so, so important. Hmm. This is this is by far probably the most, I'm not going to say probably, this is 
the by far the most important episode I had thus far. Mm-hmm. Because this is something that people need to know. So like, in other words, so strap your seatbelts, yes. folks. Exactly. Get I'm ready. Exactly. So I'm gonna say something too because I had Megan Stein on. If y'all know Megan Stein, she. Yeah. I actually, most, used, oh, to, yeah, I I actually used to hang with yeah. Megan yeah. Stein yeah. back in uh, high school. That's my good friend. I actually just heard yeah. about her I love today Megan. for the first time. Yeah, she go hard. A lot of women love she her. She can rap. Shout out to Megan. Shout out to Megan. She can legit rap though. And she told me something before. Okay, so she I got a stage presence. Yes. So I saw that on her IG like last night, and I was like, wow, like she really knows how to like engage a crowd. Like, she's exactly. phenomenal at it, yeah. And speaking of that, so I'm going to tell you a quick story. So before I started this show and I seen on on Instagram before, I did what, like, a lot of dudes did. Like, God damn, she's fine as hell. Let me mm-hmm. follow her, like, some pictures. Yes. Yeah. Right? I fell into the thirst trap. DM? DM. You DM? I think, like, 2013. I was 20 years old. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Exactly. So get the pass. Fair enough. A couple years, a few years later, she's on my, she's on my show. She's, like, my third episode. And she told me something that was like, that struck me. She said, yo, I don't, people don't really know who I am. I'm not a stripper. People think she's a stripper. People think she used to strip. People didn't know she got a college degree. Yeah. Another thing about her, she know it's a game. She said, yo, I post all these twerk videos and all this. No, it's because I know it's going to draw attention to my page. Correct. And that's what happened. She sucked everybody in to her page and started listening to her music. Now, <laughs> she, and she can rap too. Dope as hell. Now she's like one of the most up and coming rap, best one, one of the best up and coming rappers in tennis. And all of it right That's now. That's why I say, however you feel about Takashi, for example. I don't even listen to his music, but I do respect his marketing ability. Yo, because he's, he's a marketer. Clever at branding. He's a marketer. Branding. He he made. Top, I don't know what the chart is in rap because I don't. I'm not a musician. The bill, the bill, the bill, but I know. I know. I do know that that man from leveraging his social media. Yeah, he definitely used social media because a lot of people don't know that Takashi's been like in the NYC scene and you know for like eight years now, like rapping. He was putting out content like eight years ago. I don't think there's else. not to cut you off, Jay. I don't think that there's nobody who's came up in the. I don't think nobody who I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I, it's like it's, it's on the tip of my tongue. I don't think anybody who's made a, a very strong impact in, in in the last past four to five years did not. Burst off of social media. Oh, social media has yeah. helped everybody. I don't think any yeah. individual. It's like, it's like everybody's playing by old model. Everybody's going by the the deal model, Excellent the deal example. mentality. So yeah. all of us are waiting to be singing, and somebody walk into a restaurant. Is that you? Was that you singing? Yeah. And somebody signs us a deal, or we talk about this all the time. It never success never looks like you think. We think that we're going to go to a boardroom, and there's going to be a, li- a group of people sitting around, and they're going to go. Oh, here it is. You you just signed a million dollar deal. Now you're successful. That's how we think about it. Yeah, really, think, about, think about this. Not to cut you off, P. I, our first ESPN interview. Who would ever thought it would be with my good friend? Who I I we, I cut your hair every time that we available. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna haircut Wednesday. Too. Exactly, man. Because yeah. I can see. Because you know how, how well you talk. Shit. I know how well I am a professional shit talking. I know I can rub off the wrong way sometimes, but. I went and told him, and this is why the power of social media again, to bring it back home. It's important for everybody here to understand that people do not know you. It's important for you to understand that. It's important for me to understand that. It's important for the cameraman. You. It's important for us we, to understand we, that. We said that. Our very first episode of the podcast, we talked about that. We talked about being, being humble, not having an ego, because... Nobody knows who the fuck you are. And you can't expect anyone to. So even with me... I told him, I don't expect you to even know who I am. I'm not walking around here, like, I- expressing that. Like, I, I want everybody to understand. If, every, if everybody knew who, who we were, why would we even do stuff? Why would we even do yeah. anything? So that's right. important to social media, though, because um, I believe with a strong following and a strong social media presence, a lot of people will know you up front. You don't have to explain yourself to certain people. You ain't got to say your name no more. And you don't got to say your name no more. I think the power of good marketing is so you don't have to say your that's name. That's what an M will do. Yeah. That's what an M will do. I think the power of understanding social media and just really leveraging so, it. So I, I, I'll give you another prime example, right? Mm-hmm. So he has a fan page that goes that's going around. And this fan page is savage. Yeah. It's savage. It's posting all kind of crazy stuff about his life. But I was sitting in, I was sitting at H2O. It's a, it's a sports bar down here. I was sitting at H2O, and I literally was sitting there watching six girls talking about the fan page. He wasn't there. I was just sitting there. 
I, I, I'm pretty sure they knew who I, because they all watch the podcast and stuff like this, so they know who I was. But yeah, the podcast you're referring to is Mama House the Mama's House, House the Penthouse. Yeah. So they watch Mama's House the Penthouse, but they're talking about the fan page, and they're speculating what it is. They're like, I think he created it. I think it's a girl running it. It's probably a man running it. It's all these things they're speculating about. But the big thing we always talk about is you've been sucked into the world. You, it's almost like you're sucked into his world. It doesn't matter who created. It's like the a page. soap opera. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying, yeah, you just so can't wait. To I just that, thought that about the fact that man. you could be in social media or not living in social media. There's this, there's a statement that says, if you are not, how's it go? If you are not the product, or if you, if you're not selling, then you're the product that's being sold. Right. So if you're on social media, you're just on there. Your, your attention is getting sold to other people. They're running advertising and stuff like that. They're selling your attention. So you could be the person who's going on offensive. So when you create a world like that, think about it. DJ was sitting, I don't know what DJ was doing at that time, but to think that somewhere, he's unaware of this, the six people are sitting around talking about what's going on with him, that is powerful. Because those are six people that you could easily leverage into, say, purchasing something, going to go to an event, or anything you want to do. And so many people are focused on, like, your product needs to be great. Of course, it needs to be great. But I think so many people don't focus on understanding once you build that world, once you build that ecosystem for people, then you always have people you can reach out to. You can always reach out to somebody if, if people love what you do. You can just say, hey, here's my shirt with a phrase I said on the show. That's money coming into you. Instead of trying to, oh, I'm going to go spend all this money and stuff and, and try to advertise this shirt, and maybe they'll buy it. When people love you, create that ecosystem, you create that soap opera, that drama, like you said, for that people. That brand. When you, that brand, that, that story, people connect with that. That is the power of social media because you could tell a story right now. You could be broke and start telling a story about this is my rise and stuff like this is my whole journey. Same I did, it. I did it personally. You just did. I did it personally. Right. I did it personally. So my thing is when I see people, people look, all I did was take what I was doing already. And say, okay, now I'm just gonna document when I when I'm going through it, and people will get caught on to that. Then I add a message to that. Some of the stuff we use as far as messaging and how we like when we teach these big companies how to brand themselves, we use that type of stuff. But you have people fanatical. You have people. People hit me up like a guy hit me up the other day. Amazing guy. We're going to speak at PV next week. He's on the phone with me, and I can tell he's a little, little taken back by me, right. like, almost like he couldn't believe he's talking to me. And this is amazing guy. But he said, man, you're, you're a big time person. I just want to make sure we get the promotion out. He said, but I just want to let you know Mama's House, the penthouse, changed my life. So somebody, I've been told that multiple times. I've been told multiple times that the stuff I put out has changed their life. But literally, it was just me leveraging social media. Right. It was me learning. When I met him, learning, okay, this is, I already had the messaging and the branding and understood business. But he, when he came around, he's like, basically, everybody needs to see you. That's what he always used to say. He said, people just need to see what you're doing. So if you got the right message, there's no, there's been no time ever like now where you can leverage social media and can, people can say, oh, I'm connecting with you as a person, like specifically what you're going through. And because of that, I want to give you stuff. I want to pay you. I want to build with you. I want to work with you. The, top, the sheer amount of opportunities that I've been given just because of how I use social media, it, it would shock people. Right. It would shock people. Right. Hmm. I think like me personally, real quick, like uh, even to go a little bit further in terms of how powerful I think social media is. Yeah. I think about like you don't even have to be an entrepreneur, you know, to want to like actually care about social media. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because even if you're an entrepreneur or if you're somebody that just like works a regular nine to five, one of the first things like, you know, anybody you meet, even like a new employer is gonna do, is they're gonna go to Google, they're gonna go to Bing, and they're gonna type your name in. Yeah. And typically what's gonna come up first, most people don't have a website, yeah. most people don't have any content, so the very first things that are gonna come up are gonna be their social media profiles. Mm. And before they ever like meet them in person, they're gonna develop like a mental, like you know, uh, I would say reputation on that Pitcher. person. Yeah, they're mm. gonna be like, that's who that person is. Like I already know this person. It's your second team. You know, you know, you know why I know that's true? Insta stories. Insta stories, I always tell people the power of Insta stories. A person, I can meet a person right now in the club and just follow, they follow me on my Insta story. And if I meet that person, say two weeks after they watch two weeks of my Insta story, that person will be different. They feel like they know me. Because you got to think about it. They've seen so many aspects of my life. They've seen what I get up and do, the type of stuff I'm on. They see the type of events, the type of friends I have and stuff like that. Even, people will even trust you because they watch their story. Think, think about it. There's never been a time, we always tell people like a text message or getting a number or something like that. 
That's people cool. pick girlfriends and boyfriends from Instagram. Think about it. Think about that. It's almost like yeah, once again, it's the same type. To your point about caring about it, right? This is like with marketing, you always want to find a niche, right? You want to find this is the type of people I'm targeting. That's the same thing. Even if you want to take it to dating, the type of people who like you, they're watching this. You're gonna see them down there watching, like, okay, this is the type of stuff they're interested in. It's right there. So if you're putting out whatever image you're putting out, you're putting out authentically, you're gonna find people who connect with you. You're gonna find friends, you're gonna find people, business partners. If they're watching this constantly and they're watching your story constantly, this is something they're obviously interested in. Otherwise they wouldn't be watching it. And that's powerful because people can get it. I don't have to do this long resume where it's like, let me write out my resume. You see my resume daily. Exactly. You see what I'm doing. So you, do you think nowadays, since we got a social media thing, a business card is still is still necessary? I don't think it's as powerful as it once was. I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't have one. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't personally own a business I card, one. and I can't tell you the last time like I've asked somebody for it. To be completely honest, over the last you know several weeks, I've gotten back on like the networking hustle, and literally, I'm not even even I'm not even asking for phone numbers. Like I'm literally asking like, hey, what's your, what's your IG username? Yeah, literally, it's, it's just more powerful. Like last night we were out. Anybody that engaged with us or like you know came up to me, they were asking, hey, what's your Instagram? You know, username. Right. Yeah, and it's crazy because I go to NABJ, and NABJ is National, National Association of Black Journalists, mm -hmm. and I go every year. So uh, something I learned when I was there, I would have people that you see on TV asking for business cards. I asked them for business cards. Yeah. I learned that in 2015, like, yo, because ever since I got their business card, I don't use it. Mm -hmm. I don't use it. I just went to Detroit for NABJ. I didn't ask for nobody's business card. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't do the same. I didn't do the same thing for them either. I so it's a like stack of business so, cards. That I got and I haven't used special. it. And it's like, yo, I know if I give my card, I already give my Instagram. You can see what I'm doing. You have my link on there. You have on my bio. Everything's there for you. So you don't need my business card. I mean, you're not going to use it. I didn't use yours. I didn't ever use mine. Yeah. At the same time, so I like, yo, this is so overrated. Yeah. Because they're so sweet. Stone Age. Stone Age is a better word. I just feel like you can, like, for a business card, it's just too still. Like, I just, like, he just used it. I didn't even hear you say that until I just was about to say it. It's crazy. Stone Age. People are so caught on yeah. to shit yeah. that used to work. Change. Social Change. media is your business. Card. I Change. Like, like, I have to piggyback off of something that you said. Like, it was mm -hmm. so important. You said that, you know, and pretty much everybody said, like, they don't really, like, ever use the business card again. Right. And that's because the business card doesn't do anything past, like, you know, the exchange portion. What I mean is, like, I come from the digital marketing side of things. So it's like, I understand the importance of remarketing. Mm -hmm. It's like Instagram, the biggest advantage it has over Apple, like, an actual stationary, like, you know, business card is that that station card will sit, but your IG story, it your post and all that stuff, it's constantly changing constantly. and it's constantly in front of the person's face, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's how you get people to take action is with persistence, you know? And that's that, and that's that, that's getting into those, those psychological tri triggers like mere association. Like those biases that cause people to feel like they know you or familiar with you, and if somebody feels like they know you and they're familiar with you, they're more likely to buy from you. Yeah. We, we are, to be honest, I, we only buy from people we like. We, somebody hit DJ up DM the other day. I know they've been watching your story for a while, and literally what they said was, "Yeah, I've been following you for a while. I wasn't sure about your business, but now I, how do I get started?" And that happens so much. And I think that's why a lot of times when we look at business, we think of it from a standpoint of we're gonna put we're gonna put out some beautiful marketing campaign. That people are gonna buy. And really, a lot of times it's just. So much repetition that people say, you know, they've been here long enough. I trust them now. I trust them. Yeah, I, I wish you would touch on right now, like, literally the whole entire, like, you know mm -hmm. the people that follow you. Like, this yeah. man has 60,000 plus people following him. a lot of damn followers. Yeah. He's built but it. he, like, literally knows every single person. Like, like he knows what they want to see, what they want to hear. Like, it's, it, it came from a very deep understanding of uh, what the real use of social media is for and that's what we're talking about now yeah. and it really uh came from a lot of practice too so i actually got ways and like i told you in social palooza mm -hmm. and that's the free social media course i know we want to talk about that in so we're gonna, we gonna get on that yeah we're gonna definitely get on that we've just been waiting to do this y'all y'all gotta bear with us yeah. but basically um it just came from a lot of trial and error mm -hmm. a lot of trial and error i really uh, tried a lot of different things 
And like I said in social social news, I tried a lot of different things, and the result of that came a course where yeah. I just told everybody what it initially was. Yeah. But I definitely do understand what I got ways that I know, and I gave one of them away a very 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 valuable tip. I think people would pay for this tip. Um, how to make your story go viral, right? And I talked about that tip. I ought to tell it now on air just to give it to your listeners and just right. run with it. As a matter of fact, let's get there, right? It's so it was real good. brief, real brief. So initially, first step, delete everything off your story. Because Hold on, pause. Just like you always tell me. Do that. Do that. You're not playing. Do that. You know why you want to do that? Because people, it's a story. Think about it. An IG story. Tell your story. Think about walking into the movie theater and you getting in there in the middle of a story from last night. That you know, that's a good thing you said. Like, yeah. You got know, a famous friend. Like, yeah. I'm gonna ask you this though. Wait, I don't want to go too far off the tip. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you this one question. <laughs> go ahead. So we talked about this already. All right, go ahead. And I'm gonna jump back to the tip afterwards. All right, bet. All right. Mm -hmm. What is your definition of famous? Because I was gonna ask this question. Mm -hmm. Do y'all think? With social media not how Instagram work, do you think people get famous too quickly? They get they get the fame too fast without letting it, without the without the growth. I would say I would say it goes back to anything like we talked about the episode we call, call echo groups because you can be famous with inside a group and I, I I learned that from being in fraternity in college. Right. So at PV before Instagram and all that stuff got got popular, the fraternities were basically celebrities. So you didn't have anybody but us. Yeah. So people would do the same type of stuff you're talking about. For example, you know, the girls, all the times so you come to a party, there'd be rumors about you, all this type of stuff right. that happened inside that group. But if I left that group, I'm no longer famous. Right. Just in that group. And I believe that's the same thing with these communities. I believe the thing, the difference with a lot of the fame now, I don't know if it's that people get famous too quickly. I feel like there's no, there's no like professional handling of it. So, for example, right now, let's say you get 20 million followers, right. and you get some crazy PR scandal. You say something, you have no coaching about type of stuff that's, I guess you could say, politically incorrect, of course, right now, the way the world is. So, you say something that's politically incorrect, and all these people are coming at you. There's not, there's not, nobody taught you how to do this, so the fame can be just jarring for you. So, like, I know a lot of times when you're first coming up, when you start getting negative comments, right. that can mess with you. Mm -hmm. you know, that can mess with you. Some people's like, this shit is trash. Yeah. And you and you like, well, like what, what do you think I could do to improve? It's like, no, no, no. That person, they there for that. Yeah. And and I know, I know one it. thing you told me one time that you said, you said that stuck to me was like, everyone is a celebrity. Yeah, well, I, I think, I think, or at least I think, aspires uh, to be to I that think, if I you think, have a social media account, you want to be some some sort of like, you, 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 get, you want something. I just, yeah. I just think a famous person, the definition of that is somebody whose presence is celebrated. That's what a celebrity That's is, a right? right? Like when you come, people are happy, right? Yeah. When you get there, people are you excited. You se people celebrate because you there. People remember right. you when you leave. That's a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? That's a famous person, so. He, he, you, you're famous to me, like, in that sense, then. Because, mm -hmm. like, literally, like, I, I've watched, like, when we went out. I haven't been out in Houston. Last night was the first night. And I just watched, like, how many people just, like, he's just walking straight, like, just looking to get to a destination. And so many people are like, hey, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Like, everybody yeah. knows him. We were just yeah. getting into the car, like, to head over here. And, and you know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about. And, so, and, and somebody was like, DJ! I just talked to everybody at this point. I don't, I, Shouting I, from the middle of the road. I, I think, in the car I think you know what it is? You know? I, okay, if I had to break it down, I would say I think a celebrity is, is somebody who has a large amount of influence. Yeah. yeah. So I, I remember the South Park had an episode, and they, they were talking about the difference between imaginary characters and real characters. They said a lot of imaginary characters have had more impact on your life than real people. So you may have learned a lesson from, say, Disney. You watched a Disney movie, and that had impact on your life more than yeah. an uncle or aunt. Shit, so, that came from me. Exactly. So that's the first time I saw that you could have family that's dirty. Right. When Scar threw his, like, that trauma. Son of a bitch. No, I was, like, I was in the theater. I can't watch that scene no more. <laughs> really? I, I can't sure. watch that scene oh, no legit, more, no. Legit, legit. Disney thing. often gets on some gangster shit. <laughs> often. Because the, the first time, I mean, when they shot Bambi, I said, what is this? Why are kids watching this? They shot Bambi's mom. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was rough. You, was rough. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. She's like, run! She's like, run! And then, bah! I don't know if you watch like, the newest this Disney knows. movies, but even like the new Disney like, movies have like, always getting like you ever seen the movie Up? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Yo, they, they took his wife. I was like, dang. Like, like, this and I weird. understand your point you're saying, too, yeah. about the imaginary. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about him, for example, I know a lot of people 
like we say, when we get on these these shows, yeah. they're personas. Right. And not personas because we're faking, because you can only know so much about me as much as I talk on here. Right. So if this persona changes your perception about the world, right. then it's like, oh, that, that person changed my world. It's like, it's the entrepreneur guy, or it's the, it's the social media guy, it's the digital marketing guy. Right. But the thing is, it's not that it didn't affect you. It's not it could have made you more successful. Right. It could have made you better. So right. if you have influence over a lot of people, a lot of people look up to you. You have influence. I mean that's a legit celebrity. Because to your point, it's not necessarily amount. You can have an uncle who influences his entire family. Right. And they're like, oh yeah, when he comes around, every time they meet new people, they just suck them in or draw them into I, that world. I think a lot for me lately. I'll be getting slowly, every once in a while, I guess somebody comes to me randomly, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you, I don't get my name called. I don't get a kill. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I barely get AK. Mm -hmm. I get, hey, you the guy from, you, you the guy from the show at ESPN? Mm -hmm. Like, I've been getting that a lot, like, not a lot, but like slowly. I was at the mall. Hell, you. Yeah, I, I think I told you, I was at the mall at Macy's getting a shirt. Just like last week, first colony. Yeah. Some dude, I was in line, he was like, hey, are you the guy from ESPN? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I see you interview. And it's crazy, because my most famous ones, like Famous Amos or Jay Mulan and Megan Stein, who I had on, Lil Flip, mm -hmm. Booby Gibson. This was Coach Harrison. No disrespect to Coach Harrison, but like, yo, this is like the most random episode Damn, that you've Harrison. seen. Yeah. Coach Aaron Har the, the Harrison Twins <laughs> coat, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'll I tell you to that point, he's actually another thing he talks about is creating characters, right? Yeah. So when I first met DJ, he just always used to call me Mr. Hicks, Mr. Hicks. Right. And I literally still be out to this day. I'll be in a random place. I was in a, I was in a club one time sitting there. And somebody came by, Mr. Hicks. Like really whispering. It was weird as shit. <laughs> like somebody whispered, like I'm like imagine sitting in the club and somebody just whispered. Like, hey. And, and walks by. Drips off. And just drips off. You like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> so I and then like you said, um, I was downtown at Rose Go the first time I got recognized. For Mama's House, the penthouse. Right. So somebody's like, oh, Princeton from the podcast or whatever. So right. I watch it every episode and stuff like this. So I think the thing is, the way we've cultivated, you get to see you get to see it as it's building because right. it's a slow momentum. So like I say, whether it's somebody calling me on the phone or people talking to me to the first time and just seeing people be a bit starstruck. Right. I'm always looking at it like, really? Okay. Like, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. really? Yeah. But I know it's not followers. I know it's the energy you put off right. because... Some people, you when you meet some people, you know you meet some people, you just know. Right. You just know, like, that person there, there's something about them that's a little bit different than everybody right. else. Exactly. And I think that's what the celebrity is. It's when a bunch of people see that energy, that's the person who becomes a celebrity, and the energies are going to be different because DJ's energy is definitely different than mine. Right. My energy is definitely different than uh, Justin's. And, like, our energy is definitely different than yours, but I believe right. there's people who connect with all those different energies and that's what that's what creates a celebrity. That's why I can be so many types of celebrities. Right. And I, I and I can say the energy people had towards me has changed drastically from middle school to high school to mm -hmm. eighteen to twenty to now. We went to middle school together, mm -hmm. dude. I was the guy in high school, middle school, like, dude, you you was talented in basketball, but you was dumb as hell. Mm -hmm. You couldn't pass. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, people that was, that was saying that now they saying, man, this can is I get an interview. Wow, this is this is him. Like, I can't yeah. believe this is crazy. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. can I get on the show? I'm gonna yeah. say something a bit controversial. I feel like you, have you heard that we talked about this before. That book, C students, A students work for C students. Mm -hmm. I just right. feel like the dumbest people, quote unquote, school scholastically dumb people, end up being the most like successful people. That's yeah. true. That's how it works. You know, like the D students really be running shit because, like I always tell you, I'm a I, me. School is a joke to me. I don't mean a joke like most people think. Like I mean a joke like I literally knew by the time I was four years old, school was nothing. It's just memorization. I got all A's whenever I wanted. I told somebody in college, I didn't go to calculus all year. Three yeah. days before, I taught myself calculus and passed calculus. It's always been a joke to me. Right. So I, I used to tell him when I met him, I said, bro, this shit, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. That's not true intelligence. Right. That's just, I'm really good at memorizing facts. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I know all the capitals right now, who who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? Like, I'm yeah. like, well, do you know the capital of Vermont? Mount Pelier? See, and then, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and this is how I was going to tie back into what we needed to tie into, but this is important, too, mm -hmm. because when I met him, right, right, he was the one who showed me that I wasn't stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't the dumb kid. Because like, like he, he had. Because right. I had D's and yeah. stuff like that, right? Right. It was always this thing that I understood. I, I I have a deep, which is the reason why I'm so good at social media, I have a deep understanding of human psychology. 
I know how you feel from every word that I say, mm -hmm. which is the reason why I know how to work social media. I know how to make you feel good. I know how to make you feel good. I know how to sit to make her feel. I know how to do everything to make humans feel good. I'm, I guess I'm an expert in human psychology, right? Well, well like and, I told you before, it's, people don't understand. When we talk about intelligence, there's actually eight types of intelligence. Several different types of intelligence, right. but I was so hooked in the Echo Group school Mm -hmm. That logical. I, with yeah. the logical a aspect of things, like I didn't, I, I never was good at math. Right. Between all of us and everybody listening in the whole world, whoever listens to this you podcast, just fucked up on some math. I just messed up on some math, math. <laughs> and <laughs> What's I, 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 I struggled literally reading right. and spelling. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I have a sneaking suspicion you might be dyslexic. I and might be because sometimes we be in the car. I misspell shit. That he, don't sometimes we be in the car. He be like, yeah, man. Uh, turn left right here. I'd be like, that's the right. That's the right. Uh, point right, right and everything. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I used to associate that with smart. Right. So, so I, I literally did. Well, a fact but machine. I, I thought that that was what smart meant. But until I started making money, mm -hmm. right, and I hope that hit everybody across the face. Yeah. Because all of that shit that I thought mattered meant nothing. You know who I Absolutely think? nothing, bro. Right. You know what I like Absolutely. I told him about, you know, the example I always like to give. I give him a lot of time, but I give it him again. I always told him about Henry Ford. One of the most beautiful stories I ever heard was about Henry Ford. So Henry Ford, they were trying to break up his company because they said he's too, he, he had an article published about him that said he was too stupid to run a company. So they had a whole legal team come in grilling him for hours about what do you know about the, the, the four-cylinder engine and all this type of shit? So he sat there, listened to it for a while until he got irritated. And he told the dude, he said, so, okay, I, right now, at my office, have a row of buttons above my desk where I can tap one and bring somebody in right now who you are not intellectually capable of even asking the question that they can answer. So why would I fill my head up with this useless nonsense when I could just get somebody who knows it? And I told him that because I said, you could spend your life reading books. I read a ton of books. I said, I think my count is over 800. I read a ton of books, but I told him the most powerful skill is being able to go get the right people and get them to work. That's, you don't have to, if you can, if you can master that. Uh, if you can I master still be people, misspelling stuff, but that's the only thing I know I do right. And it's a joke. But when it came to, say, for example, Mama's House, the penthouse, we had a fully staffed team of interns. Same. Because... He understood how to leverage something. So when we put up a, a, a we put up a landing page that said, "Hey, you want to work for us and stuff like that." We had over 100 applications. So my thing is, when you look at something like that, and you say, "Oh, where did that come from?" You gonna say this man's not smart because he can't get A's in school? Right. And I'm telling you, me, I just know his memorization. I can teach somebody the techniques how to memorize in school. Right. I learned how to memorize really well in school. So a test, I would, I would, I never studied. In my life. I never did some same way. So I just yeah. used to be I like, never could, I know how. let me show I up. I don't retain information. Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you a funny story. It was this show, so right? So what do I do in school? It was this show, right? That was like basically mnemonic techniques. It just means memory. Right. And what they were showing you is like, you could use like, this is crazy, but you could use like very dirty things to memorize shit. So you say something really filthy to remember, memorize stuff. You know, like you remember like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah. I just would do shit like that, but I would do it with very like dirty Don't things. Yeah. So, but I'd always remember everything. Like, I remember the I took two days to remember the entire periodic table, doing that. You know so, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he had like recently uh, been interviewed, and he was like talking about like the just the schooling system, the educational system, mm -hmm. and he said like you think about a baby, he's like every single baby, every single child is born as like a little scientist they're like a little researcher <laughs> everything's like fascinating to them yeah. everything's exciting like they have a passion and a desire to learn but then for whatever reason once they actually start going to school to the school system that desire and that passion becomes oh i can't wait until summer break oh i can't wait to get out of That's class until 2 30. Yeah. and he's like and it's right there in that moment where you know, people just like trying to figure out what their passions are in life is right. stunted. And that's really what, you know, one of the biggest problems with, you know, the educational system to me is that you're forcing information that isn't ever going to be of significant use to people, even at the collegiate level. You know, majority of the information is not applicable to what your actual passion is and right. what you want to learn 
and what you would actually excel at the most. Yeah. And I do, and I think too with that, because when you were a kid, you think you could do, any, you want to be anything in life. Yeah. But I think the one thing that stunts that is when they get told you can't do that. Yes, you and that does happen. And that see, happens. You see, a lot of kids. Me, I was a rebellious kid. I never, I never liked, uh, I never liked my teachers. So you know, I was the kid when the teacher, you know, how the teacher used to be like, you want to teach this class. I actually did that. Like the teacher, I, I remember she used to bully everybody, so people be talking to class. She'd be like, Mr. Sutton says, says, you want to teach the class? You know, embarrass them and stuff like that. So I remember one day, it was a math class. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm about to show her today. So I came into class, I just started talking, just ridiculous talking. And she said, Mr. Hicks, you want to teach the class? I said, yes, I do. So I got up, got to the front of the chalkboard, answered all the questions right, taught the class, like over-exaggerated, like, all right, class, so turn to page such and such. And then at the end of the class, I never forget, I looked at the teacher and told her, I looked at her in the eyes and said, oh, and by the way, class, no homework. <laughs> Everybody applauded and left the class. And the lady came to me afterwards and was like, look, I know you understand. You got to We got to do this. <laughs> but she never did that shit again. Wow. She never. And what, you, what you're talking about to me is, for, from a young age, I always felt like I never liked how school was trying to push you down the path. Something like, even when I started my company, it was to challenge traditional thinking, to help people reach their full potential and live a life of freedom. Because to me, I never, ever liked when somebody said, oh, you have to do this this way. Like, I always tell people, to me, success, for example, is not a million dollars necessarily. Like, if you, if you are a teacher right now, and you love teaching, and nothing makes you happier to teach, I'm not going to tell you go be an entrepreneur. Why? You don't love that. But, like, what we do, we love what we do. So this is why we do it. This is why we come do shows. This is why we do our stuff we do. So, to me... The life I'm building is success in my eyes, for me. But I always tell people, I want to, that's why it's to build the life you want. Right. Mm -hmm. 